Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Kayla Rivara in Baltimore, and we're continuing our conversation with Sheer Hever on the legacy of Ariel Sharon, the former Israeli prime minister. Thank you for joining us again, Sheer. Thank you, Kim. What did Ariel Sharon symbolize, and, and what made him such a historic figure? Uh, Sharon symbolized different things to different people. Um, most of all, he symbolized uh, the most dark aspect of Israeli society and, and the Zionist movement to, to Palestinians, to Lebanese people who suffered under the attacks that he orchestrated. Um, and uh, in many ways, he is Israel's uh, second worst war criminal in the history of Israel after Ben Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, who um, orchestrated the Nakba, the uh, deportation of the, the majority of the population of Palestine. Uh, but Sharon uh, was somebody who was uh, symbolized uh, as a brilliant military leader and, and uh, um, conniving politician with a, a great ability to lie. Uh, and it was to a point of, of extreme where people uh, found it, even inside Israel, some people found it surprising that uh, he's able to keep on uh, resurfacing uh, and uh, gaining more authority and more uh, positions of power after having been caught in additional scandals and additional lies, uh, there was a common um, talk amongst Israeli leftists when I grew up uh, in Israel uh, that uh, when the day comes that Sharon will ever become prime minister, that means we have to leave the country. That is like the, the red line that Israel is no more uh, livable. And yet, when it actually came, um, nobody actually left the country, or, or very few people did. Um, because of that, uh, because it somehow uh, uh, memories tend to fade, people tend to to forgive and, and uh, consider uh, the new image of Sharon that he adopted uh, before becoming prime minister as a more moderate person. Uh, although we should remember that he became prime minister by uh, provoking a, a very a violent uh, a confrontation with Palestinians uh, on the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, while Ehud Barak was prime minister, uh, and this provocation was one of the main one of the main reasons that led to the uh, outbreak of the Second Intifada, and with the outbreak of the Second Intifada, he was uh, able to become prime minister in the elections because he was uh, Mr. Security. What What is the significance of his death, and how will he be remembered, and by who? Sharon's death is somewhat of an anticlimax because he was in a coma for uh, seven years now, and uh, this is something that um, um, was was rather unexpected. Uh, people thought that when he had a stroke that he's going to die quite shortly, but I think the family insisted on keeping him on life support as much as possible. Uh, but um, I have to say that even though Sharon symbolizes so much of uh, uh, the, the darkest aspects of Israeli society and, and the Zionist movement, uh, to me, um, I, I nevertheless mourn the fact that he died, uh, the, the fact that he died, because um, it show, there was also a great hope amongst leftists, amongst uh, uh, critical voices, uh, that Sharon will be tried for war crimes, uh, being the second uh, most violent or the second most deadly war criminal in Israel's history, um, he would be a prime candidate to stand in front of the uh, International Court in The Hague, um, and uh, to, to answer for the crimes that he committed. Uh, and uh, this is something that, uh, of course, will not be possible after, after he died. Uh, and um, in, in many ways, uh, a lot of people were, um, were hoping for this sort of symbolic trial to, to symbolize that you cannot uh, perpetrate so, such terrible crimes without paying a price for them, without being accountable for them are severely disappointed. Ariel Sharon formed the Kadima party and referred to it as centrist. And Shir, I wanted to get your response to that. Um, this is uh, another uh, one of, of the very brilliant ploys uh, that Sharon made, because um, the, with, uh, the reason that he formed this party was because the Likud party was not willing to go ahead uh, with the withdrawal from Gaza. Uh, and this was mostly a symbolic thing. Sharon understood that symbolism aside, the strategic thing to do uh, for Israel is to uh, withdraw the colonies from Gaza and put the Gaza Strip under siege. Uh, and the Likud party uh, was not willing to go along, along with that. Sharon formed his own party. Uh, but this is not a party about uh, promoting the peace process or about uh, um, recognizing the rights of Palestinians. It was a party about being more pragmatic and practical in making the occupation more sustainable. 
uh, and uh, uh, what but because he positioned it within Israel's very uh, strange uh, political system to the left of the Likud party uh, it made it seem as if it's a centrist party uh, and uh, what, the person who has to thank the most uh, to Sharon for this movement is uh, Tipi Livni who is currently Israel's uh, minister of justice uh, because she became the head of that party uh, not immediately after Sharon but after Ehud Ulmert who was a uh, prime minister after Sharon uh, and uh, uh, Tipi Livni uh, continues to be considered by the international media as a centrist or even as a moderate Israeli politician because she's associated with this party because this party it was made to see to, to be seen by Sharon as if it is a party that is willing to promote the peace process while and this is despite the fact that we have so many evidence so much proof that everything that this party has ever done was actually to sabotage the peace process to continue to expand occupation to build additional colonies even while Sharon was withdrawing from Gaza in the year 2005 uh, the number of colonists uh, in the occupied Palestinian territory during the year 2005 has actually increased because he withdrew 8,000 colonists from uh, the uh, Gaza Strip, but uh, pushed 20,000 colonists into the West Bank. So he increased the number by 12,000. And that's just something that the media didn't uh, bother covering. Shir Hever, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Caleb, for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.